Hello, this is a note on the new Marine Barograph app from Starpath. And uh, it, it's for the window uh, for iOS. Uh, and the, um, the importance, uh, one important feature of the app is it will also work on older phones, iPhone 6 or newer. And the idea of that is that you can then convert with this app, you can then convert an older phone that may not be in use otherwise into a, a full time uh, high end electronic barograph. Uh, just to load the app in the older phone. But here's the way it looks. When you first turn the app on, this is the splash screen in the por portrait mode. And this field here, this is showing the 30 minutes of past pressure here. It's been running for some time. And, um, and this is 30 minutes. When you first turn it on, this will be all blank here and empty. And then this pressure will be be read and recorded here once a second once a second so this is showing the past 30 minutes it'll show up once a second and it'll bounce around at first because the pressure see these are still very small pressure changes here it's a very accurate sensor in these phones and uh, this uh, this app reads those uh, pressures so you see this is only 10 14.5 0.7 millibars up to 15.2. That's a very small pressure range. However, this structure that you see with these remarkable sensors is actually real. Is a real and and we'll demonstrate that later with another video where we show like five phones, five independent sensors beside each other responding to um, say the uh, fan in the room coming on or a big gust of wind going by uh, uh, a door, a doorway, or a hatch in your in your vessel. Uh, so this this will start out blank and it'll start to scatter. It'll be a big scatter here at first and then as you get more data it'll home in and this is 30 minutes and then every this is here every second then every um, six seconds it will then oops I can't click there I have to push it here every every six seconds it will write the pressure in another field uh, that is over the past three hours and in this this again you won't see this till the data is accumulated for three hours and the important thing to keep in mind that with the Apple system this unit or it's not just this app it's any app any pressure app they can only collect data while the app is actually on is is showing on the screen it has to be showing on the screen otherwise there'll be a pause in the data um, if you look here like see here's a time when the when this even though this is an older phone this is actually an iPhone 6 and uh, this is plugged in almost all the time and that's why we have a lot of data but this gap here for some reason this is when the phone this phone was not plugged or the phone was plugged in but the app was not showing so this would be a gap here uh, when that's done done and so the other thing when you first turn it on you'll see the pressure here this is units of millibars you can change the units and then there'll be these two trend arrows here these trend arrows and that shows you that this pressure is dropping fast and the explanation for the trend arrows will be in the help file down here. You press the help file and then uh, scroll that up. And there's a background. This is more than just it's more than just how the buttons work. There's a background on the productive use of a barometric pressure. And then here's some uses of the app. And uh, there's a discussion what we're doing. I want to get down to the trend arrows and you'll see the meaning of the trend arrows. Uh, that's down here further. This, okay, so here's the trend arrows here. And it shows that how fast the pressure is changing for those different symbols. And these are rising and falling like that. And then you push this button to get back to the main display here, like that. Now, and, uh, and so the also, because this is designed for mariners to use at sea, this is also collecting navigation data. Now, there's no, this is your course over the ground and your speed over the ground, but we're sitting here in the office and nothing's moving. So this is the direction you're actually going in your vessel, and that's the speed you're going relative to the fixed earth. 
and uh, but we're not moving so these are now zero and this is our latitude and longitude and we can change the format that we display of this you can also change whether or not it's UTC or some other local time and um, the data let's see what else we want to show oh well one of the main display features is I'm holding this in the portrait mode now if I rotate it sideways to the landscape mode then I get a larger a larger picture of the of the graph but it's the same way it's just easier to read on this three hour graph we have something also added it's the amount of pressure change between this end three hours and now this is now and this is three hours ago and the pressure is dropping 1.3 millibars per three hours and that's because that's a an official weather service or world meteorological organization term the pressure tendency how much it changes in the unit of millibars over three hours now you can can also either swipe it to the right or push this button here this arrow and then you get a display which might be the typical display in the vessel or in your living room but you know in the in the in the pilot house of the boat you have then a big picture of the pressure that you can see from everywhere you know just walking by it 10 feet away you have you keep an eye on on the pressure which is so important uh, for monitoring the weather Let's see, let me just rotate back now to the vertical position and I can look at the view data, this button here. And that is, uh, that's showing the, where the data is stored. Like every second there's a data point here uh, for 30 minutes. Every six seconds there's one here. You know, every 48 seconds there's one stored in a 24-hour data. So you can go back and look at uh, back files. You can also then, I could like export one of these or I could look at the data. I can just tap this top one. And now this is all the data here. Uh, that's uh, going to be once a second, once a second. So you see this is six, five, four, three, two. That's that data. And then you can export it. If you choose export, then it will let you share that data and it will create a CSV file that will then open up in, um, in Excel or other programs like that, other um, spreadsheet programs. Now if I go back here, and likewise you can look at the data from like file 5, you know, and so forth, and export just it. Depends on what you want. Now keep in mind as a mariner, as a navigator, I'm now, I'm now going to push back to get back to here. As a navigator, you're going to also have, this is a data log, this is the actual record of your navigation every second every six seconds every minute whatever so you have this as a backup so if you just even if you didn't run it all the time if you just turn this on uh, every once in a while for a few for a minute or so or a few seconds every every once in a while once a day or once an hour whatever then you have stored in your uh, in your phone an accurate record of your navigation this is reading the this is reading the GPS sensor uh, of the boat of the vessel, and uh, that is the main. Well, let's look at here. It's got some other very nice features. Let's look at the setting, and now uh, here is where you would put in. You would change the the time zone to UTC. Now, if you want to have sea level pressure, you have to put in your right elevation above above the water. And uh, we would, even if you're on a vessel, if it's just a smaller vessel and you're just six feet above the water, you should put that six feet in there because these are very accurate measurements. And then you have a, a pressure display and then you can change, you can change the, uh, uh, use degrees or decimals for that. And um, then down here, here is where you put in like the elevation. Now when you put that in, that's going to change the, the sea level pressure. Here's where you change the pressure offset. And this phone, and we have here in the office you know, have some very accurate National Institute of Standards barometers, two of them. So we know the exact pressure and we can then hold this phone up next to that and, disco and discover that this, this particular phone, the sensor was wrong by 2.5 millibars and we just change it. Now that's actually a a fairly large error 2.5 uh, most of these phones especially the newer phones when you pull them out of the box and you find a way to check it accurately you're gonna see that they're probably within a millibar 
And so that's how, but this is what you do, and you only change, and the instructions explain this. You only change this if you're really confident that you know the right pressure. Otherwise, you can just assume your phone is right to within two millibars, probably, probably more. So I go back to this button here. So that's the main functionality of how the device works.